<sighs> you know, it was only a matter of time before we ended up here. Hey, welcome to LFF. I'm your host, Matt Mirage, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, there's a playlist of all of our previous LFF episodes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, there's going to be a new upload with some different content in the world of large format photography. Today, we're heading into the darkroom and we're going to talk large format sheet film processing options. There's more than one way to do this, so let's head on into the darkroom. I'll break down the different ones that we have available and see which one's right for you. So we can divide our film processing into two main categories. We've got daylight processing and complete darkness processing, and they kind of sound like you would think. Daylight processing only needs to be in the dark as long as the film is moving from the holders to that process, and complete darkness from the time you unload the holders until the time you're done in the fixed bath is when you need to be in total darkness. If you have a darkroom space, usually that means you have a way to darken it, and complete darkness options can be more cost effective assuming you have the space. If you don't have the space, there's lots of daylight options that are out there. Let's start with the complete darkness processes. One of the first processes in complete darkness that makes a lot of sense if you have a dark room and you already do some printing or enlarging are tray process. So for trays, you really just need plastic trays. You need a minimum of three, preferably one for each step in the process. I have my trays labeled, so Develop, stop, pre-wash, fix, all that good stuff. Tray processing at its core is really simple. We just have to have our sheet of film in total darkness. Um, I like to process my sheets emulsion side up, so that's the notch code the same way up that we loaded it. I'm gonna drop that into the tray and then just put a finger down and then another one and press it down. So to rotate film during tray processing, uh, gently lift up the stack, peel up, and then set it down, just like that. Peel up and down. If we don't let it gently hit, if we kind of let it do this, this can scratch emulsion to emulsion, and then that's not fun. Some photographers, like Ed Weston and Ansel Adams, they would actually process films emulsion side down. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. You just don't want to mix and match. So if I have one up, you don't want the emulsion side from both films kind of having a chance to stick together, plus it gets confusing. And when you have trays, you can process anywhere from one sheet of film at a time. I can do up to 12. Uh, I think six is the sweet spot, but this is how you rotate the stack. So lift, peel, and move. And since your fingers are touching, I recommend having a bath of, or a tray of cool water so you can dip your fingers in there because the heat from your fingers uh, will cause uneven development if you're, you don't want to be touching it the whole time. I'm just gently touching the film and pressing down like that. And this keeps a nice bead of water between the films. And this is what's known as agitation. Tray processing typically takes longer than some of the other processes because you have open air kind of swirling around and the developer is oxidizing. So just keep that in mind. But if you already have the trays, you already have a space you can darken out, I recommend tray processing. But one of the next total darkness processes that we have available, if you have a darkroom space or an area you can get completely dark, is what's known as hangers and tanks or dip and dunk processing. They're called hangers and tanks because we have these stainless steel hangers and the film is meant to slide inside these hangers. We have these little channels which allow the chemicals to move in and out. And once they're in, we lock them down with this and then we dip and dunk and that's our agitation cycle. I find these are really valuable when I'm processing films that have a very sensitive emulsion like x-ray film or infrared film or even if you're just using a film that you know uh, is not as scratch resistant as maybe Ilford, Kodak, and Fuji, these are a good way to process film. One downside about it is you need a lot of chemistry to fill up these tanks. This is an 8x10 uh, six hanger tank and this needs a gallon of chemicals to do the job. And if I need to do more than six at a time, I need three and a half gallons to fill this old hard rubber tank. So the biggest downside to these is they take a lot of chemicals and a lot of space, but they're very hands off. Dip and dunk processing is one of the older ways that's been around, and there are versions of this available for color that labs use, but they have like a chain drive that moves multiple hangers at a time through. It's a completely different type of dip and dunk. It's more at, at scale. This is kind of the one of home version. These are getting pretty scarce used, and a lot of them will have certain amounts of bend to the hangers, so just be careful when you're looking out for those. Uh, try to get ones that uh, haven't seen as much abuse. The last total darkness 
processing option. I kind of consider the nuclear option. It's one I've used before in a pinch when I was just doing one sheet of film for a test. It was some x-ray film, so not a big uh, risky investment there in sheets of film. And here's why. In a pinch, you can also use, yeah, a little gallon or two gallon freezer bag. So the idea here is you pour your chemicals in here. I know this looks ridiculous. You pour your chemicals in here and you can actually seal it up tightly and you can slosh around a single sheet of film at a time. I suppose you could do multiple sheets of film. This is not sustainable. It's not recommended. It's, it's a way to do it though. So I wanted to cover, this is the $2 way to soup your film. This is the, if you already have trays way you can do it. And then this is a, uh, a little bit more consistent, but maybe a little bit more expensive way to do it. And these are for complete darkness. Let's move on to some of the daylight processing options. This is probably the area that large format has seen the most growth in in recent years, especially like the last five. It seems like every year there's a new system that's out there and they're all pretty great. I've had a chance to use most of these different daylight processing systems. And because we had a cheap one at the end of the complete darkness options, here's the cheapest option for daylight tank processing. If you already have like a Patterson tank or an Omega tank or just a generic uh, film processing tank that you use for maybe 35 or 120, uh, we can do a very simple method called the taco method. The taco method involves in the dark, taking your sheet of film and you're gonna fold it emulsion side toward itself and you're gonna wrap a rubber band about it, around it and stick it in the tank. This will allow you to process up to four sheets of film in a standard uh, two or three reel Patterson tank. It's not the most even thing, but in a pinch, it can get you to work uh, with this tank. There are much better options for these type tanks. And if you already are invested in a Patterson tank system, there's a few other systems that are organized around this tank. And one of the first ones that I came to know that was for Patterson tanks was called Mod 54. They allow you to process six sheets of film and a Patterson three reel tank, which is really beneficial. Another tank that, or another reel that has just come out that allows you to use these as well is the one by 20th Century Camera. This is actually my 20th Century Camera eight by 10 reel. I use this when I'm not doing a lot of film, two sheets at a time, or I don't have access to my darkroom space. This makes a lot of sense. I can do two at a time. Uh, Jeff makes reels that allow you to do multiple sheets of 4x5, 5x7, and he even has some ultra large format reels. So those are some good ones to check out as well. And again, both of those are alternatives to the taco method, but utilize the different Patterson tanks. So I'm going to have links to those tank systems down below in the description. Another daylight processing option that is maybe a little bit higher end, but as far as versatility is concerned, it's awesome and that's gonna be the Jobo system. So Jobo is really a full solution system. It doesn't utilize uh, somebody else's tanks. They have their own solution for everything. And a Jobo isn't just a tank. The tanks are one small part of the equation. The Jobo is an entire system that includes a, a heating device, a rotary unit, so it's actually moving, spinning the film and agitating it for you, uh, as well as a place to uh, heat up your various chemicals. There's many different levels of the Jobos. There's CPE2s, CPP2s, which are heavier and have a lift arm and you pour the chemicals in like that. And then there is the Jobo ATL, which is an automatic lab, which kind of does everything for you as long as you clean it out often. These are great solutions. If you don't see yourself just shooting black and white, but also a fair amount of color, this will handle that because you can have precise processing temps from 20 uh, to 40 degrees Celsius. And that's pretty much the whole gamut that you would need for film photography. So it's all right in there. Jobos are a pretty expensive option. I'm not gonna pretend like Jobos are cheap. They're not, but they're pretty excellent. A lot of them out there on the market are gonna be used and used are great. They even have their own four x five system, a little bit clunkier than some of the other ones that are out there, but it does a great job. The other cool thing about Jobos is you can get bigger drums and expand your system to use for paper, color process. So you have a lot, uh, a lot of ceiling on the Jobo system for daylight processing. There's some other self-contained units that I don't have here in the darkroom, but are definitely worth mentioning. Another new up and coming one is the Stearman Press SP445 and SP, I can't remember, I think it's SP810 system. So that's uh, the four x five and eight by 10. Those are self-contained units 
that allow for multiple sheets of 4x5 developing. So the SP445 allows you to do uh, four sheets of 4x5 and the 8x10 allows you to do a single sheet of 8x10 or four 4x5s four at once. So that's another great option. Really good reviews, good chemical flow in those. Um, I saw an initial version of the 4x5 and I really liked it and I have a friend that has his SP445 and loves it. Another 4x5 tank that is out there would be like the HP Combo Plan tank. I don't believe those ones are made anymore, but there's still a few out on the used market. It's another six sheet self-contained tank system. Pretty good. I, I find the Stearman Press um, and the 20th Century systems are a little bit, a little bit nicer than the HP, even the Mod 54, a little bit nicer than the HP. And then uh, there's the Yankee Tank system. I've never personally had good luck with the Yankee Tank system, but it's another self-contained tank system that allows you to do multiple sheets of four by five. And it's, it's a tank system. I, I prefer using stuff I already have. So if I can efficiently work something into a system I've already got, that's great. That's what's gonna work really, really well. Another one that's kind of now defunct, but if you can find it, they're still a good buy. It's called the Patterson Orbital. So the same folks that make uh, the standard 35 and 120 tanks have a, an self-agitating base. So it kind of swirls around and it has a movable tray and it takes a single sheet of eight by 10 or it, has, it comes with a divider and allows you to do four sheets of four by five while kind of sloshing everything around. Really good for even development um, and continuous agitation. One thing that's worth mentioning about a lot of these tank systems, ones that agitate for you, what's known as continuous agitation, they finish your processing a little bit faster than if you were doing open trays or manual agitation, and that's because they're constantly doing it. This usually shaves you about 10 to 15% off of your processing times. So if you wanna be in and out as quickly as possible, those are a great way to do it. So that was my brief overview of the different sheet film processing methods. There's quite a few out there spanning all sorts of different budget ranges and availability ranges. So you don't have to have a dedicated darkroom space to develop your black and white or color large format films, but sometimes it helps. Personally for me, this is my relaxation zone. This is my sacred space. I can come in here, make a little bit of a mess, put on some tunes, kind of chill out while I'm souping my film in trays or hangers and tanks and just kind of let the time fade away. I'm here, I'm relaxing, I'm loving it. How do you like to process your sheet film? Was there one I didn't mention? Let me know down below in the comments. And we'll catch you next time for more LFF.